I've seen you in all these roles. It seems like you do more historical dramas than stuff set in the modern day. How does this just keep happening? I'm told that if I do one more, someone buys me a house. So I'll I'll keep at it. (laughs) There you go. So what do you like most about, you know, doing these types of historical pieces and kind of getting transported, you know, into the past? I think one of the best things about it is you don't have to look at a tennis ball or wear clothes that are green, made from green fabric. I think there's something wonderful about sitting on a horse dressed in period costume, holding your own sword as you actually ride through a courtyard out into battle. There's, that's a kick that you won't get if you're sitting on a digital set. Like it's just not, not the way it goes. I'm, I'm, I, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of history as a kid and I like to completely immerse myself. I don't want to have to imagine that that tennis ball is a dragon coming to bite my face off. Not that there's anything wrong with tennis ball dragons, but yeah, you know how it goes. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, the showrunner, Jeb, he, uh, some god went up as a survivor. What did you find most interesting about this character? Um, I think that the fact that he's a survivor is only one facet of his character. I think the truth is that he is surviving for a reason. It's not just, holy shit, I've got to stay alive through all of this. It's, it's actually there's something that I want to do. And in order to do that, I need to be very careful about how I make my moves in life. Um, and I think he's blessed with an intelligence and a patience and, and the ability to wield a sword should he need to, um, that enables him to, to survive significantly longer than the vast majority of other characters in this universe. And I'm speaking historically, as well as in the, the Valhalla Valhalla world. Yeah, and this is such an interesting time period where it's set, it's kind of, you know, like the end of the Vikings era, and then you have the whole Christian uh, and pagan uh, factions at war with one another. Can you just speak to that element of how this, you know, religion's just kind of boating all over the whole uh, series? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I know the show explored before when it was just Vikings, and I think... I think that the message that if, if Jeb's trying to say any message about religion and, and both of us are the, 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 the children of, of religious men, I think his dad was a pastor, mine's a vicar. Um, you come to respect that uh, a religious upbringing doesn't necessarily mean you're a good person. Um, and that just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you follow the Christian uh, sense of morality or ethics. Um, and that it can be used and butchered and, and distorted. And the same for the pagan faith. I mean, any single form of belief structure can be perverted by an ambitious mind. The sets in this uh, series are just incredible looking. How did they appear? Uh, how did they uh, compare to the all the other period dramas that you've done? I think one of the nice things about this show uh, was that, uh, take the Kattegat set, for example, that's, the same set that they've been using from the Vikings TV show. So said a hundred years later, they get to revisit it, make it a bit bigger, make it a bit wider. And so you've got sort of six or seven years worth of television history, making entire backlog um, resonate with those who love the show. But if they haven't seen the original show, they're going to see a village of a scale that just literally doesn't belong on the first year of a new TV show. And then my last question, uh, how much research did you do into, you know, the actual history of Earl Godwin? A lot. Um, A lot. I read a lot of books. Um, I found a lot of gaps um, and I spoke to a few historians who tried their best to give me an idea of what might happen. Um, But the truth is a lot of the references that we've got are biased and written by people who wanted to distort how they were perceived across the years. Um, Some of the information was written hundreds of years after the fact and so isn't necessarily that trustworthy. So the interesting thing is is seeing how Jeb has woven these points in history together and sometimes whether he's done it for dramatic effect or whether he's done it to actually sort of contemplate what historically genuinely could have happened. And I think that that's a fun game for Jeb to play and a fun game for us to to enact out for him as his glorious, well-dressed puppets. (laughs) 